Hello, Please. hello. Hi, Stani. <laughs> hey, Ella. How's it going? Hi. I love it. I was just commenting back backstage. You're wearing the most Finnish outfit, right with the speaker shoes that are very traditional uh, Finnish they're, shoes. They're actually very Finnish and very comfortable. Yeah, which I think is uh, on point because you're quite a local celebrity uh, here that I, you know, I've learned. I was talking, I'm going to be interviewing Stani on stage and everybody was like, oh my God, you're going to meet uh, Stani. So, yeah, you have quite an amazing story. We, 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 I mean, we're sort of old friends right now. We've known each other for a few weeks, which in the space of Web3 seems like eternity. Feels like ages, actually. Yeah, so you dropped out of school, high school, when you were 16. Then you like found your, your way to get a, a law degree, but that didn't cut it through you, and you, you ended up starting what now is the fifth uh, largest bank in Finland, <laughs> which, you know, by, 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 by assets under management. Yeah, tell me about that. Like, how did you get into space? Yeah, I mean, um, kind of like, I, I would not say we're running a bank. I mean, but if there's some, uh, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I, I, we're, we're building like technology um, that actually might be the infrastructure of the whole financial ecosystem uh, in the future. Um, and, you know, it also creates sort of opportunities to, to innovate for young people like me. And I stumbled upon on, on um, decentralized finance and Web3 pretty much uh, by accident, uh, mainly because, you know, I was just uh, very uh, eager to finish my degree here in Helsinki, and I, um, I had a programmer background, and I loved finance. Uh, I used to build fintech applications where you know you innovate a lot of things in the, uh, kind of like a front end of the applications and user experiences, and in DeFi and decentralized finance, you kind of innovate in the back end yeah. of the uh, systems. And I wanted to finish my degree and, and find like something to write, which is like tech using tech and solve uh, legal agreements and found like Ethereum and smart contracts and like my mind was just blown away like what yeah. you could do. And you also volunteered at Slush three times, right? Before, yeah. before now running a really impressive organization. Yeah, that was that was one of the you know best experience here, you know, in in, in Slush and 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 whole like I think uh, my my time in Finland as well. You know, I met so many cool people, and it's just like it's all about like the culture, and I. Pretty much like people who did talks here, like I still like rem remember them and, yeah. and I feel them, so yeah. That's incredible. So um, let's get everyone on the same page and imagine I'm your grandma uh, <laughs> and explain um, what Ava is to me um, and to everyone in the room because it's, you know, we know it's a P2P, it's a decentralized, I mean, it's a protocol running on the, the lending protocol running on the Ethereum blockchain. What does it, like, what does it mean and why should everyone in this room care? Yeah, I think uh, the easiest way to explain Ave is that, well, one thing Ave means ghost in, in, in Finnish, but um, as what the product itself does, it's, uh, it allows uh, to grow your cryptographic assets uh, in interest. And why it's important is that, uh, you know, cryptographic assets and, and uh, blockchains uh, pretty much are a very efficient uh, and secure way to store value. Uh, meaning that essentially because it's safe and, and, and um, secure, you can store any value on, on chain. And it doesn't need to be direct value, but just representation. And pretty much like one of the biggest storage of value at the moment is so-called stable coins, which are representing the US dollar. They don't fluctuate like traditional, like we know how cryptocurrencies fluctuate. And, um, and that's pretty much one of the most uh, kind of like popular things to do. You have yeah. stable coins, you supply them into the other protocol and you earn uh, quite a lot of interest compared to the low uh, interest economy we have now in, in uh, real life. So, so the reason people should care is that they can, you know, get their get their wallets. They can start using Ava, and they can actually um, have much higher yield on whatever little or a lot of assets they they own. Yeah, and I think it's more about opportunity because, like, uh, it's nice that you have assets that are growing in 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 uh, their amounts and and you're earning interest because you're kind of like fighting against the yeah. inflation. But I think it's more about the accessibility to yeah. financial infrastructure because uh, what decentralized finance does 
used very well is that it just, as a permissionless uh, protocol uh, network, it allows anyone as to participate. Grandma, I don't understand permissionless <laughs> protocol, but I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, well, a protocol means that, you know, it's just accessible. A protocol is accessibility, so yeah. uh, internet is a protocol, um, you know, uh, domains are protocols, so when you hit av.com in your browser, you know, there's protocols behind that redirect to you, yeah, yeah. to your server. And it's all, like, in short, like in Web3, everyone is talking about protocols, and it's very confusing. Uh, but essentially, it just means that it's accessible. So let's say that if I supply assets uh, here in Helsinki, I live here, I have the same um, kind of like opportunity that anyone else is supplying from India, or let's say Brazil, or Argentina. Yeah. And we have like an equal democratic, the democratic right into the yeah. financial infrastructure. Yeah. And I think this is major, right? Because like <laughs> this space, and I think uh, we can talk about it in a second if these are right reasons or wrong reasons, but has the PR problem. I think even talking about, you know, the social impact or like the what is the impact of this space and what is the uh, pre PR perception of this space? I think a lot of people are rolling their eyes and they're saying, yeah, it's a bunch of people like playing the global casino, uh, people changing their avatars on Twitter to like a JPEG and like starting to communicate in memes. And, 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 and you know, I think some of that is probably justified. We can talk about it in a second. But it is also true that right now we take certain things, uh, especially when it comes to access to banking services and certain financial products, even if they're not great, for granted. And there's many countries in the world where you just don't have access to that. And like, there's no way you can, you know, you don't maybe even have an ID to like register properly with, you know, with, so you don't have access to those services, which I actually think there's a, there's a strong case for economic empowerment that it took me a little bit of humility to realize because I was very much on the train of, um, um, yes, crypto is extremely exciting. I mean, it, there's it, the space is moving extremely fast, but I think there's a real question, like, um, which I would love to talk about. Um, you know, there's a question of access and obviously bringing, especially globally, which is like not something we think about all that much, like people to give that access to opportunity, but. Um, you know, um, I think it's. A, it, I would love to talk about uh, about you know how you think about uh, in general taking a step back from Ave. This space, you know, it, is it increasing global inequality or is it is it sort of is it increasing access? Like, is it uh, like how do you think this space can evolve so it's actually this uh, exciting tool uh, where the claims of decentralization are actually going to play out in a way that's like that's building a positive future for more people and not making, you know, the 1% um, like have crazy amount of yield on the assets that they already have. Yeah, I think kind of that's a that's a very good point because like the part of all this centralization value is that yeah. uh, you 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 are you're working with a model where you are putting the network um, kind of like business model ownership to um, to the users, and we can talk more about that. But essentially, what you are trying to do is that. Uh, you're trying to empower a lot of people, but yeah. also get give them this decision power of actually how these protocols will evolve in the future. And I think regarding to kind of like um, how impactful the technology is, I think like there's multiple aspects there. I, I think the accessibility is of course one thing, uh, but it's not just accessibility to let's say um, you know like uh, financial services. It might be stable coins that are built on top of. Um, uh, for example, Ethereum that allows you to, uh, if you live in a country where there's a lot of inflation, you can actually hold an asset that doesn't lose value yeah. on a constant basis. But also, it's more, more also about uh, letting the users and people decide what kind of uh, financial services they want to actually use. Because yeah. the whole financial infrastructure is built in a way where I would say that you know it's based on um, consumers giving their funds to someone else to manage, and everyone is focusing on their daytime job and they yeah. expect profits. But it's more about you can choose as an individual as well uh, what do you want to empower. So if you want to use particular protocol and be part of that community, yeah. um, you can empower that way as well. So you have, and the thing is that today we have more like information as, as, as users, we have the internet, we have, we have more data to 
about financial markets and and finances, so we are able to manage it even better than the financial, uh, like the traditional financial ecosystem. And yeah. and this sense as finance like proves it uh, quite well. But I think like there's still a lot of work related to like if you want larger empowerment because um, we definitely see that these DeFi protocols are helping if you have capital. Yeah. But then the next step is to help like how do we get all the billions of people more capital? But whether like it's actually um, you know useful to be a DeFi Web3 user, yeah. we have actually a lot of examples where by using these protocols just by once or twice, uh, the uh, projects um, and the founding teams are rewarding uh, the users by giving them governance power, and yeah. that governance power might be worth tens of thousands of dollars. And what that's are some of the examples, like for the people here who has have never ex seen you know um, any of the airdrops. I think the recent one was uh, ENS, so Ethereum name service, where you know if you took yourself an ENS, so normally uh, Ethereum address is zero uh, x like uh, one two three five x blah blah blah, but then you know I could actually mask it by just having stani dot eth. Um, if someone wants to send me <laughs> NFTs here, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that's that's how you mask it, and just yeah. it's a simple application, and uh, people can use it, you know, to send me NFTs or you know use it. To in applications in a programmable way, mm -hmm. but also because I created this uh, and claimed this and uh, this uh, ENS domain, uh, I received an airdrop of being part of that uh, community. And yep. these airdrops are, you know, it's a new way of like yep. taking the value where in traditionally, you know, shareholders are like kind of like having the value loops back to the users yep. and and letting the user decide how this like mo most important infrastructure uh, in the next internet are kind of like govern so i think it's it pays off to be uh, like a user i think that's an important like i guess heuristic in this space that uh, the the user owned networks and you know whether you care about finance and whether you care about defi i think we will see many more of those ways of how things are done in web3 like change pretty much ev like how everything is done. So like one of those ideas is that the user owned networks, right? So why should people care, you know, like explain, ex maybe explain like what is what does it mean and like uh, how, you know, maybe give, give, like give me a good example of like, like now we take a lift and like, we never benefit from from uh, exactly. the fact that we take a ride, but like, what, what is how does it work in the sort of ways of doing things in Web three, and like, why is that important? Yeah, I mean, like normally, like how we see businesses like being structured. For example, I mean, everyone or someone here, I'm pretty sure took a Uber uh, when you came here to the slush from your hotel or wherever you were um, staying, uh, and pretty much you you paid for that service, right? Mm. But uh, that value goes to the to the company and the rise to the shareholders. Well, in Web3, the model is kind of different because, uh, for example, when you supply funds into the uh, Aver protocol, on each every second you get uh, governance power. And with this governance power, you control that particular network. So it will be the same as every uh, meter uh, mile you take with Uber, you get part of Uber equity. And you can basically decide and participate in the meetings. And why it's important for me, uh, especially is that because this infrastructure is very important for the future, and I think uh, you know when we are talking about finance, we're talking about like like the most like foundational uh, protocols. I think they shouldn't be governed by the um, by by companies. Yeah. They should be co covered by people who are using them actively. And this is why what Web3 is all about. It's user-owned networks, and they become communities. Mm -hmm. And you don't necessarily need to be in a particular community because everything is code. Anyone can take the other protocol code, mm -hmm. fork it, create a better of it, or if they don't like the, the way things are handled in the current governance, they can create their own uh, oh, fork wait, of Ave, it. How is Ave user owned? Maybe explain like how yeah. like user governed. Yeah, so uh, example, like when you deposit funds, every second you get the governance power and you use the governance power to vote on changes of the protocol. So the protocol is completely smart contract based and our team can't go and just change the code. And the code is is the thing in, in, in Web3, mm. meaning that let's say that 
if the interest rates w wanted to be changed or um, any kind of uh, infrastructure, how much the Aave as a DAO, uh, so, so the community governance means uh, and user ownership that there's a DAO, decentralized organization that is collecting part of the uh, uh, yield from the, from the uh, activity and then using that for grants and, and improving the protocol and, and okay. hiring folks. So there's a new term that was introduced here. I want to make sure everyone is on the same page. A DAO, uh, a decentralized autonomous organization. What um, I mean, I'm sure many people already know what they are, but for those uh, of them, I'm going to explain and then you can tell me what I made, what, how I messed it up. Um, it's this idea of a decentralized organization when there's no, that's, that's fully user owned. I mean, there's a future where it's fully kind of run by the code, but I guess now in practice is mostly community governance with a certain set of rules. And the promise of DAOs, which I'm sure you've all you know, read uh, about sort of on the high level, is that um, people can organize in a way that's not necessarily a cooperative, it's not a corporate sort of uh, entity and a company, and people can join and just essentially say, I want to contribute in this way, and essentially join, um, start benefiting financially through their labor or through some other participation without anybody having to like formally hire them. Or So it's, it's a new way of organizing. And uh, tell me about... Um, Again, like what I messed up about the definition and also what is the Ave DAO uh, and how does the DAO, uh, yeah, and how, how, how is the DAO involved in the governance there? Yeah, it's, it's very simple. Like any, sing, any kind of a change that needs to be applied into the protocol, it has to go to governance process. So yeah. there is first fearless discussion in the governance forums and whether something should be done. There's some part of politics related to that, which is uh, interesting to follow. Yeah. But also there's this attitude of like, you know, getting things done and, and you know, making the protocol more efficient, you know, competing with other protocols and communities and ensuring that the users are getting most out of the protocol. Yeah. And, you know, they come together and uh, once the proposal goes uh, on chain into the blockchain, they come and vote with their uh, tokens, basically. And Aave is interesting as a protocol because it's cross-chain and there's cross-chain governance, which is kind of a new thing that we... What does it mean for... for the yeah, people? so, so you know, decentralized finance and Web3 kind of was... It started in Ethereum because it was like very active community and it had smart contracts, but now the same, you know, infrastructure is a bit in other networks. You know, Ethereum is becoming very busy, meaning it's it's becoming a bit more costly to interact with. And now there's other networks, so-called Polygon, Avalanche, and 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 um, these are on other communities as well. Networks are communities as DAOs too. Yeah. And the protocol has been deployed on these other networks. And also the, the Aave DAO and Aave community is governing across the different networks. And normally, why it's so interesting is because the networks do not talk to each other mm -hmm. unless there's some sort of like a bridging facility and we have this kind of like a governance bridge yeah. that we created and I, I think like um, it's just about like different kinds of communities end of the day yeah so we have maybe eight more minutes I want to make sure we sort of take a step back and, and also get, get back to the talking about how how some of the amazing intellectual and creative energy in this space and just the speed at which this space is moving can be used to solve big problems in the world and hopefully not contribute to too many uh, new ones. So speaking of DAO, so everyone here, and this is like, it's confusing. It's like, oh my God, like what are those things? What are those people talking about? Go join a DAO, like find one that like you like. You don't have to like uh, be, yeah, uh, we, right? we can... like we all actually, joined, we're part of the same DAO, which was a real world DAO called the Constitution DAO. And do you want to, it's like a, yeah, do you want to, do you want to say what it was? Yeah, sure. And also we can create the slash DAO, you know, if, if anyone wants oh, to sign up, I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. Oh too. yeah, slash DAO, yes. <laughs> and yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, the Constitution DAO, I, I think um, there was this uh, young kid came to our office. So always, you know, Web3 community is very open, you know, you know, people come to our office in London as well and, you know, work in different projects. Yeah. And, and one of this young, uh, developers, Miguel, was telling me that they're raising funds to buy the Constitution of the United States. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's a good idea. How do you plan to do that? And th he basically said that they, they're going to have a DAO where, you know, everyone can contribute eth uh, Ethereum. Uh, and, and, and then when, once they have enough Ethereum, they can, uh, you know, convert that to dollars and, and buy that constitution. And the, the idea is that all the DAO members jointly owned uh, the constitution of United uh, States. So a pretty simple idea, just if, you're, if we're losing anyone here. Essentially, it's almost like crowdfunding in this case. People said, there's this remaining piece of the constitution. Let's
let's raise enough money so we can bid on it and we can buy it and then donate it to some place so it's not held in some private collection, but it's displayed to the public. And the thing that DAO was doing was pooling funds and then um, uh, having a governance token where people would be able to vote what happens with that constitution. So the DAO members would essentially be putting in money and then governing what happens. So like very simple model of like what was the goal of that DAO, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think like they, they essentially they, they were outbid by a TradFi, so traditional yeah. finance guy. Yeah, my hedge fund guy. Yeah, which was a bit sad in one way. So like we still have a lot of work to do to, to beat the traditional finance or yeah. get them to join us. But I think like uh, it proved very interesting point is that, uh, you know, Web3 uh, and blockchains are interesting way to get people gathered together yeah. for one particular cause. Yeah. And this same like playbook can be used everywhere else, you know, you could use it to you know, rescue some sort of uh, you know forest fires yeah. in the same cause and have a like joint effort and and, and venture. So yeah. it's it's a way to organize and have like kind of like a voting transactioning that is yeah. on chain, transparent, yeah. and it, it it definitely is a way to to and that also need to be like uh, everyone needs to vote. You can yeah. delegate the voting power to like a smaller set of people that the DAO trust to make things efficient. It's just a very very efficient way to manage uh, kind of like the voting. Yeah. And capital together. It, it's likely that if, if there's already an issue you're uh, uh, passionate about, um, there's probably a DAO that's trying to do something about it. So there's DAOs that are trying to like buy in all the sort of uh, scientific research that like let's like locked in academia and like commercialize it for free. So like you can be involved there and like see what those DAOs should be purchasing and like how they should commercialize it. There's like DAOs trying to like uh, impact the climate. And it's interesting because those organizations are managed in a very specific ways using native tools of Web3. And it's an amazing learning curve, I think, right? So yeah. I know I want to talk about uh, two more things that uh, we, we chatted uh, recently. I know you're also um, uh, excited about some of the universal basic income projects. Uh, yeah, tell me about like how this space could be a applied to, you know, further um, uh, redistribute the, the global wealth and hopefully make a dent in reducing the uh, income inequality. Yeah, I, I think like two interesting parts now for me, like in terms of research that uh, we're like doing in Ava and thinking, of course, is that uh, one is social, social graph because yeah. that's, that kind of creates identity and, and solves some of the issues in, in current social media. Social graph, essentially yeah. the idea that like social graph of Facebook or for Twitter, right now it's owned by companies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're trying to do an open uh, public good social graph. That exactly. Other, yeah, told me. Yeah, so currently, you know, if you go to Twitter, you have two, 3,000 followers that, you know, are loyal to you and you want to port your followers somewhere else. So for example, there's another application that is getting traction. They have interesting way to interact with the content and user experience. You can't port your audience there. Uh, but for example, if you have something on chain, uh, meaning on, 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 on the blockchain, you could actually um, just create an application on top of this kind of like a public social graph where you own the content. So let's say um, if a developer across the world creates an application on top of this social graph, you come with your um, uh, wallet, uh, cryptographic wallet, you connect and you see all your audience there. So it's a way to populate your audience, but also kind of like a, create a bit of identity around you. Yeah. And the next thing we're thinking is that like how we can actually expand the impact of Web3 and universal basic in income is very interesting experimentation because it's you kind of can't test it properly in uh, real life economy because you know real life economy is very fragile. We're very scared to touch it which yeah. is very like kind of smart thing to do because you don't want to you know experiment with uh, economy we did that in 2008 and it didn't work out and <laughs> you know in in uh, yeah. defi you can do a lot of experimentations so yeah. defi decentralized finance is a big big sandbox you know there's protocols like ave where we build for institutions like like larger capital adoption mm -hmm. but you can experiment a lot of things and universal basic income is a nice experimentation yeah. area because uh, you can actually try to um, create some sort of a system where, you know, as you generate the, the cryptographic uh, address, you get daily income there if you subscribe to it. Yeah. And 
I think it's a way uh, we can actually manage to do in in very scaled way. Yeah. Uh, because anyone can generate a, a cryptographic address any part of the world, and if you start to receive funds there, you know that's a way to empower masses in the future. Yeah. And when the reason it matters, and I like, I, I hope I just like keep bringing it back to like the grandma, uh, uh, is that. A lot of people, especially in the developing world, they don't have a way to receive funds right now. So there's not not even an efficient way of, of of sending them something, right? So there's many projects in that space. And if you're excited about this idea of like hopefully people getting unconditional cash transfers just before because they're alive and just because you know that's the human right to have enough money to you know feed yourself and your family, uh, there's actually a lot of crazy positive energy in that space with a, quite a few really advanced projects that I think can finally make a, make a dent. I'm like the first uh, time in many years I'm actually optimistic of like maybe the, the, the goal of UBI being achieved because of Web3, because yep. of what's happening there. And I don't think it was possible before. And yes, um, there's many uh, very different things happening in this space, but I think it's important for everyone who's like trying to make a positive difference to like not discard it and actually take it for like the incredible potential that it has. Yeah, anything else we should like, uh, we should, uh, you, you want to mention? I know Ava yeah. is launching uh, uh, um, something early next yeah, year. Yeah, I think we should really do this launch now. I mean, yeah. if anyone is in into it, I'm, I'm in Rave today uh, in, in one of the Ava kind of like uh, parties. And if anyone wants to talk, like I'm very excited to build something yeah. like that. They're throwing a most amazing party tonight. So yeah, <laughs> if you're, uh, hope you can make it. I think we're at time. So this is, this is about all we have, but thank you so much for, for thank you. For, for, thank you. Uh, and thank you for listening. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers.